Fighter jet engines are military technology that is kept very secret. Their complicated form, high quality materials, and special ways of making them make them useful to any country. Countries usually don't want to share this kind of technology because it could threaten national security or get into the wrong hands. But here's something interesting. There's been a big deal between General Electric Aerospace and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Kelly, I'm told by sources that General Electric is in final discussions to cement a partnership with India's Hindustan Aeronautics. It's a significant development because it ends a technology denial regime that started after India's nuclear tests in 1998. India conducted three underground nuclear tests those tests slowed down India's progress in getting advanced combat aircraft engine technology. What's even more surprising is that the agreement with General Electric involves the crucial transfer of critical technologies. These technologies are so advanced that the United States hasn't even shared them with its treaty allies like the United Kingdom, France, and Australia. It's a big deal because India is getting access to some cutting-edge stuff. If India places significant orders, there is a possibility of transferring technology ranging from 80 to 100%. Now, here's a point to think about. You might wonder why Russia, being a close partner of India with historic ties, didn't trust India enough to give them the technology for their AL-31F engines first as Russia and India still see themselves as close and strategic allies even though the word ally comes from the West, they see themselves as close partners. And they have a long history of ties between their countries. The AL-31F engine is from the Soviet era, and India only assembles it under license from knocked-down kits supplied by Saturn. India can offer various support services for the AL-31 FP engine, like overhaul, ground handling, customer support, and more, but they don't have access to the cutting-edge core technology. On the other hand, the United States is offering a complete transfer of technology for 12 key technologies, such as special coatings for corrosion, erosion, and thermal barrier for the hot end of engines. Other technologies offered by GE include machining and coating for single crystal turbine blades, nozzle guide vanes, and other hot end parts. Blisk machining, which refers to the manufacturing of blades and discs as a single unit, is also mentioned as part of the technologies offered. GE is also offering technologies related to powder metallurgy discs, machining of thin wall titanium casing, friction welding for fan and afterburner, polymer matrix composites for the bypass duct, and machining and coating of ceramic matrix composites for nozzle guide vanes and flaps. Some of these 12 critical technologies are ones in which General Electric has provided a full technology transfer. While the recent agreement between India and General Electric for the purchase of GEF 414 engines may appear promising, should India be overjoyed by the recent agreement? Indeed, the GEF 414 engine is regarded as a highly capable engine and is frequently classified as a fourth generation engine. The engine is generally considered to be more powerful than the Rafale's M88 engine. It provides greater maximum thrust than the M88 engine, but not greater than Pratt & Whitney 229 engines, General Electric's 129 engines, or AL31 FP engines. India's AMCA Mark I will be powered by General Electric F414 engines, similar to the non-stealth version of South Korea's KF21. The F414 engines might not be the best option for a dedicated fifth-generation fighter such as India's AMCA fighter jets because it is missing a number of features that are essential for a stealth aircraft. The F414 engine is not a fifth-gen ready engine. 
The shape and design of the engine's exhaust nozzle and inlet can potentially increase the aircraft's radar cross-section, making it more visible to enemy radar, which can limit the aircraft's ability to perform complex maneuvers, especially during air-to-air -air engagements or dogfights. Fifth-generation fighter jets are designed to have highly integrated and interconnected systems where the engine works in synergy with other components like avionics, sensors, and data fusion capabilities. If the GEF-414 engine is not specifically designed to seamlessly integrate with the rest of the aircraft systems, it may result in suboptimal performance or compatibility issues. So, is this the final chapter for India's most cutting-edge fighter jet program? Perhaps not, as the French offer has already been submitted and they have stated that they are ready to transmit all of their technology and will place no restrictions on stopping any access to sensitive issues. Last year, Safran and Hal signed a memorandum of understanding to begin collaboration on this high-thrust engine for Amka Mark II, an engine specifically made for a fifth-generation aircraft. An entirely new design, developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization and Safran, will be the engine up for bid, and there will be a clear division of work between the two companies. Safran has provided a development plan for the engine and is now awaiting a decision from India. Expected to produce thrust in the range of 75 kN of dry thrust, with the ability to ramp up to 110 to 130 kN when combined with an afterburner. As an analogy, the thrust of a GEF-414 engine is about 58 kN dry thrust and 98 kN when afterburner is turned on. And the Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine, which is designed for the F-35, generally produces around 127 kN of maximum thrust, without afterburner. Last year, General Electric put in a proposal for the co-development of a 110 kN thrust engine for the stealth fighter with Indian agencies. But it's not clear how much the U.S. will share the engine technology. The Indo-French engine's dry thrust is still lower to the Pratt & Whitney F-135, but significantly superior to the GEF-414 engines, and also France is offering full transfer of technology. It is unclear whether the engine France is offering can supercruise without using the afterburner, However, the F-135 engines cannot supercruise either. Instead of supercruise, the F-35 relies on its stealth characteristics, advanced aerodynamics, and other capabilities for its overall performance. The engine will be able to satisfy the needs of future Indian manned and unmanned platforms in the period of sixth generation platforms. Let me know what you think should India go with upgraded GEF-414 engines or with France, which is delivering a higher thrust engine with complete technology transfer? Before you post your thoughts in the comments section, you should know that making an engine from scratch usually takes longer than using a design that already exists. It also depends on whether or not the country has the right technology and industrial base to make such a project work. Also, starting from scratch to make an engine can be more expensive because it takes a lot of research, development, and testing. It is very important to look at the budgetary effects and long-term financial promises.